I beg you, leave me in peace! I can't, Joe. I've joined the Order now. Show us your true self! Oh my god! They should have renamed this game The Order Prologue and reduced its price by half. Because that's exactly what this is if we're being honest. A preview, a fucking $60 teaser to a much better and more full story in the inevitable sequel that it clearly doesn't even earn here. Yet it thinks it does by judging by that ending which is insulting, leaving so many goddamn hanging threads, it's criminal and wholly unsatisfying. Oh my god, wasn't that six to seven hour QTE laden cover bay shooter amazing? It's so good, we are leaving it completely open because franchise. Oh, what's that? You, you want a complete story? Well, fuck you, wait for the sequel. Yes, it's admittedly hands down the best looking console game to date and really shows the future power of the PS4. And I was getting a bit worried since most of the games really didn't look all that next gen, but this one definitely does, completely. It looks better than 90% of computer games that I've played. There is just so much attention to detail in everything. It's animations, I mean look at this shit. Look at this fucking lamp. Holy shit, look at that fucking lamp. Holy sh- Look at the fucking water on it, the fucking j Holy shit! That's a good fucking lamp! Look at the way this fabric buckles under the pressure of my boot! Sweet. Whoa. Whoa, oh my god. <clears throat> Holy- Oh look, it's fucking deforming! Joe! Joe, come look at this! Holy shit! That is fucking cool! Look at this! Look at when he puts his boot on the fucking Zeppelin. Look at how cool my blind fire looks! Hastings carry! Nice! Wipe every last rebel off this bridge! Shotgun is spotted! But that's about all it does really well. It's like a launch title that is nearly a year and a half late. A tech demo showing off the power of the PS4. Everything to your liking thus far? Quite. Just another ordinary London morning. Indeed. I cannot deny that the beauty and the seamless transitions do help immerse you in its unique setting. And it's actually a pretty cool one at that. It mixes up uh, known mythology with some new ideas. King Arthur's Knights of the Round Table live for multiple generations and protect the people of London from horrific creatures of the night. You know, using their skills and their near invincibility as long as they keep their black water close, a special lit healing liquid poured from uh, the Holy Grail that gives everlasting life if used quickly enough. Damn, boy! I need to get me a swig of that. It also helps that the game is bolstered by a fantastic soundtrack, a great sounding special effects, and excellent voice acting from all of its characters. Skill, love. I must admit, you do move fast for a man of your age. And I curse to be reminded of his decrepitude by a fair damsel. My lord, this damsel would never be so callous as to do such a thing. Sure is he. Would you ever? <laughs>
but it serves to make it even more painful that it somehow manages to fuck all that up by focusing on the wrong elements of the world and stuffing the experience so full of QTE cutscenes pointless walking and looking sections, and dull cover base shooting from one gallery to the next. The opening section is one long interactive, slowly paced cutscene. And then every time this game seems to get going afterwards, it is abruptly interrupted by yet another lengthy cutscene injected with pointless QTE bits to make sure you're still paying attention. I absolutely loathe pointless QTE. I think perhaps two hours are just cinematics, which I'd normally be grateful for, but in a six hour game, that's a third of the time spent watching the thing when I wanna be playing. The Order is so obsessed with being a movie that it even puts pointless black bars at the top and bottom and applies a film grain effect, which probably does more to hurt its amazing visuals than it helps it. Giving up the ghost now. <laughs> Fancy enough a rant. Then consider that the other third of the game is taken up by walking and looking sections where you're taking in the scenic views. Yes, your game looks amazing. But clearly, there's not much to this. There's nothing to explore in this very linear adventure. Especially when half of the things I pick up have no goddamn purpose to them. It's padding, it's filler. Why let me look at the backs of things or rotate them around to investigate them if they never fucking have anything relevant or interesting to show off on them? It stinks of the devs smelling their own farts here at how awesome their graphics are and insisting to take 30 minutes out of the game just to stare at some old fogies boring photos. Tomb Raider's relic investigations, you know, I'd understand, but they're not, okay? They're just questionable inclusions. Sort of like how instead of doing battle with creatures of the night from horror stories, you know, as we assumed the Order would actually be doing, no, we're pulling guard duty for some powerful rich jackass. Galahad will deal with this in due time. I have a more pressing matter to attend. As you wish. How many of us will make the journey to uh, America? Oh, uh, Lord Barrett, Lord Darwin, and myself. I've heard many great things about the Agamemnon, Lord Hastings. Oh, she is the finest the United India Company has ever built. I can promise you a pleasant and speedy journey across the Atlantic. Almost the entire time, you're fighting generic London rebels, okay? One enemy type, well, a few enemy types, instead of the vastly more interesting werewolves, or lichens as they call them, which you maybe only see three or four times throughout the entire game. A shame, since it's supposed to be these half-breeds that are the scary enemies. <sighs> Oh, my God. 
they are hilariously easy. Perhaps the easiest dummies in the fucking game. Press X when they charge, and, and then shoot when they retardedly walk back where they came from to just reset and do the same thing over and over again. Instead of ripping you to pieces from behind or above or below or a dark corner, hell, anywhere, then the fucking same place over and over. Look! All right, all right, all right. watch this, watch, check this out. Okay, here he comes. He's gonna, he's gonna charge. Alley oop! And he's gonna go right back. <laughs> you shoot his ass. He's gonna hide. And he's gonna go. He's gonna, he's gonna stand there. He's gonna go. Alley oop! And, <laughs> and whoop! And right back. Right back to the same goddamn place. And here he comes. Whoop! I don't know where he's coming. Oh! oh <laughs> oop! He got me that time. I just wanted to see what would happen actually. Up! Oh, here he go right back to the same spot. Oh! There you are! <laughs> Whoa! Oh, you're fucking dead. God damn this game. And this isn't the extent of how dumb the AI gets either, okay? AI partners are entirely useless. I've never actually seen them record a single kill in my playthrough. When I desperately needed them to land a fucking hit at point blank range, they couldn't even do that while I'm being cornered by numerous waves of dudes. Oh my god, these fucking shotgunners. What are you doing, lady? I mean, fucking help me. God damn it. Get this fucking dude off me! Oh god, you everything is so fucking good. Oh Boss, my god. Shoot him, he's right in front of you! God, fine, I'll fucking kill him! For the love of god, I reload and you're not doing jack shit, are you? You're just gonna fucking let me die here. Okay, I'll fucking do everything. And fuck! What is it? Come on, shoot him! Shoot him! Shoot him! Shoot! Yeah, oh, yeah, you couldn't hit him either, you dumb fuck. The rebels themselves don't seem to use cover effectively and never really switch up their tactics. The only things that you will have to fear in this game aren't those mentally challenged lichens, but rather the uninspired shotgunners, right? Which just charge your position relentlessly and are insanely armored to the point where if you have a crappy rifle at the time, you know, in one of your only two weapon slots, you're gonna die. A lot. Oh shit, oh fuck it, it's a, oh fuck it, it's a fuck, oh my god, what the Oh, fuck it! Don't you f- Oh! oh you f- You fucking fuck Oh shit, here he comes again! I'm gonna fuck him! Oh shit! Fucking face, what are you charging me for? Oh fuck, there's nothing I can- Oh, please. What the fuck? Oh shit! This fucking shitty ass pea shooter, you fucking turn the fucking head! Oh, come on! Come on! Don't you stupid! Stupid gun! No! Don't you dare! Don't you fucking dare! <laughs> oh, no. The more interesting aspect of the world story, like where do the lion lichens come from? Who controls them? H how the rebels are supposedly allied with them? How does that shit even work? None of that is explored, and all of that would have made for a vastly more interesting storyline. I kept waiting to see a, a lichen show up on my side, like begrudgingly working with me, perhaps against his own kind. Instead, I met with some of the most infuriating victim of circumstance storyline that we see countless times in just bad movies that make you want to scream out at the fucking screen. Whatever it is, for God's sake, tell me. Not this time, is he? Just fucking tell them what really happened, you stupid fuck! The prisoner stands accused of the most heinous crimes. Sir Galahad has betrayed our ancient trust. Adding Open to his your litany mouth of evil, and say he has words. presumed to take guilty. You dumb shit! Fuck! Guilty. Fuck it! Fuck it, you deserve to die. The sentence is death.
So essentially what we've got is plentiful QTE, right? Pointless padding and what amounts to basically Gears of War gameplay, but now with mustaches and fancy hats. Gears of War in London, brilliant! What will you think of next? What I'm saying is there's nothing original in this game. I mean, Nikola Tesla does show up, sort of like your personal cue from a James Bond movie, and he does provide some unique gadgets and weapons to play around with that gives us a few mini games to, to break up the monotony here. Like, I don't know, lock picking is in here. There's even hacking, if you can believe it, in 1886 using forced electric charges. There are two really unique weapons from him that stand out. The lightning gun where you literally shoot, you know, fucking bolts of arcing electricity. Out of the way. And a thermite gun where you fire off clouds of oxide, which you then ignite with your alternate fire flare round, which then explodes it in spectacular fashion, denying your enemy's cover. However, these weapons can sometimes be taken away from you by cutscenes in the story which can be annoying as hell when you've been saving them up for the right situation. But what really puts the icing on the cake for me is the boss battles. There are two boss battles in the entire game and they are with these bigger elder lichens, right? And they amount to nothing more than QTE. Not only that, but the second boss battle is an exact fucking carbon copy of the first one. <laughs> That's right, the same fucking QTE boss battle twice and one is the finale of the game. It took five years of development to come up with this shit? Really? Really? Corporate commander himself couldn't even come up with that bullshit. What? Y yes I could. Who the hell do you think came up with it? <laughs> How no one else in development or QA even noticed this, I don't know, but god damn, that's lazy. At this rate, I don't think he's gonna last much longer. <laughs> despite it being absolutely stunning and beautiful to look at, despite the seamless cutscenes and interesting mythos, the actual meat of this insanely short six to seven hour experience is just a series of checkbox gaming cliches, adding nothing of its own to it, the formula. They even managed to include the completely by the numbers stealth sections that have instant failure states. Hey, you! with really only one way to approach these enemies. No creativity. Awesome. Great, I'm glad that was in there. Damn it, I'm in no mood to jest. What blows my mind is that knowing that they had no multiplayer, no replay value at all, the cutscenes, by the way, they're not skippable, so you will be watching them in their entirety every single time. You know, why then weren't branching paths or multiple endings even considered to help alleviate this. Or hell, even collectibles that are worth a damn. The audio files that we get are so annoying because you have to play them on the options screen instead of letting them play in the game as you play. So you know what, you just quickly forget about them and avoid them, okay? But probably more so because they don't even really add anything interesting to the overall narrative. This is the testament 
of Captain Emmerich Duncan Douglas, retired officer of the Royal Dragoon Guards. Wasted time, if you ask me. The game truly feels like the PS4's launch title, uh, you know, tech demo. Sony's version of Rise, right? That was de just delayed over and over and it's only just now coming out to a resounding thud. An insulting prologue to a much better story that the game just unashamedly sets up here and just completely disappointing you. Get out of there! Hello? That the entire game ends with a single QTE button press before the credits roll is just a perfect summarization of the whole experience. The Order 1886 is, yes, possibly the most visually impressive video game ever created for consoles, but it is also a perfect example that graphics aren't everything. Five years of development time for a paltry six hours of mundane, generic gameplay is completely unacceptable. The final verdict for The Order 1886 is a four out of 10. Slightly below average. It was gonna be a five out of 10 average for its amazing graphics, fantastic direction in its cutscenes, and you know, serviceable gunplay even though it's generic, but I just couldn't with this insulting, presumptuous, unsatisfying ending and story combined with its extremely short length and non-existent replay value. You will be done with it in two sessions tops. A so there's there's nothing here that I could recommend this game on. It's certainly not this PS4 system seller or a reason to go out and buy a PS4. Do not buy this game at full price, okay? I do think that you should pick it up at some point if you do have a PS4, but only after the price has come down. Or better yet, rent it or borrow it from a friend and then give it back to him so that he can use it as a coaster for his drinks while he's playing other games. As is its destined ultimate fate. We want new IPs, but not like this. We want satisfying stories, we want satisfying game length, and we want replayability. We want something new into the mix. It can't just look amazing, it has to play amazing. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. <laughs> no, stay up! Oh. All right. He said don't stay up, stay up. Stay up, stay up. Stay up, okay. Stay up. Stay up. okay. Right, ready to go. Alright, do it right from right here. Ready? Just go eye eye towards the camera.